Hello and welcome to another TV Central one-on-one podcast. I'm Aaron Ryan. This is episode 1, 2023. The new season of Australian Survivor Heroes vs Villains is upon us, premiering Monday 30 January 2023 at 7.30pm on 10 and through 10 play. Joining me now is one of the villains, like, please explain, because it's celebrated journalist and anchor and one of my heroes, the gorgeous Anjali Rao. Hello, beautiful, and thank you for joining me here at TV Central. Hello, Poppet. <laughs> what an honour to be on episode one, 2023. You are definitely. Look, let's ask you first what qualifies you as a villain as opposed to being a hero on survivor because it says loyalty honor and mateship make a hero and being shrewd cunning and don't mind bending the rules makes you a villain what's going on well what else was i going to be cast as with this accent for a start (laughs) (laughs) but you know journalist born villain that's just the way i popped out of my mum I was born a villain. Um, But I think a lot of it came from what I did on Real Housewives of Melbourne, where um, because I'm the only one ever to have quit in the middle of a season and I was incredibly mouthy, that automatically makes me villainous. It doesn't make me, you know, clever or funny. It makes me evil, apparently. (laughs) I also saw some press for the show, though, and you said... I think the heroes are going to be so far up their own asses just because they've got the word hero there. I'm starting to get a sense of why you (laughs) might have been labelled the villain. That does sound like something that I would say. Um, But also when I was told that the season was going to be heroes versus villains and would I like to know which one I was, I responded something like, don't you dare make me a hero. So (laughs) dull. (laughs) you're definitely not dull for sure okay so you're the villain are are you what they call a survivor girl as in is this show right up your alley or did you agree to be part of it because it's the opposite of anything you would ever do and you wanted a challenge absolutely definitely the latter so um i have always put myself in risky situations um professionally speaking And I enjoy doing things that absolutely terrify me. My entire career has basically been about that. And, you know, Housewives was was definitely the case with that. It's not something that I ever, ever considered doing. Um, And it was the same with Survivor. But I always highly, highly respected the show. I mean, how can you not? What you have to do to be able to qualify to be cast is it's you know crazy it's super super intense um so I was always a fan as far as that was concerned but never in a million years did I think you know what one day I'm gonna be on that show (laughs) (laughs) I'm still pretty surprised by it actually you must have thought about what the show you know what you'd imagine it would be like was it was it like what you thought it'd be like or were you just totally blown away by, by it all um it was in parts what I expected, but just there, there's nothing in me that could have prepared me for the sheer intensity of it. And, you know, every single second, even with all the preparation beforehand, is spent in a state of perpetual terror um, that never really goes away because you don't know what's coming. Um, so... It was a lot more, um, there was a lot more tension than I ever anticipated. Um, But, you know, as as far as those sadistic challenges go, when you see them, there's, there's, it's not possible for a a human who hasn't done it to realise what that feels like. It's just petrifying. (laughs) And you think, what? sadist came up with this <laughs> <laughs> well so so tell yeah. me what, what was more more difficult for you though was it the physical experience or the mental experience of the whole alliance group dynamic type stuff um I think for me it was always going to be the physical because you know I'm a 
five foot two, almost 50 year old, you know, mother who's a journalist. Um, and you look around and you see these people who are Olympians and, um, you know, AFL players and they're eight feet tall and completely ripped. And you're sitting there looking at something going, I have no idea how I'm going to get over that as far as the obstacles are concerned. Um, and you think these people, it's going to be so easy for them because they just have so much physically of what I never will. Um, and, you know, I just kept sitting there hoping for a short person challenge. Um, but but the mental part, um, you know, it it's one of those sort of feelings that it kind of takes you back to high school in a way going, are people pretending to be nice to my face and actually they are conspiring to destroy me behind my back, a bit like housewives. <sighs> um, so there's always that feeling that's there. Um, but I was having a difficult time um, emotionally. Just It was just bad timing for me because I was going through something personally back home and trying really, really hard not to think about it because 1000% of you has to be in this game. There's no doing it halfway. You know, you're all in or not at all. And so just having to switch my mind off what was going on back home, um, I found that to be, um, yeah, that was one of the hardest obstacles for me. Mm. Well, I guess that mental part, I mean, we know that you've been on the Real Housewives of Melbourne um, and there were a few colourful characters in there. Um, that was well, a, <laughs> a different dynamic. I mean, you sort of answered this a bit, but what, what, was it hard to work again with people when you don't know if they're being genuine, like they're playing a game, they're putting on a face to win votes? I mean, because they are playing for half a million dollars, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, at least with Housewives, there was only what? seven of us but you know you've got 23 other characters um in survivor um who you don't know like you know you've, you've met them for the first time and you've got to collaborate and work together or work against um and it's that that sort of um strategizing that is it gets easy once you get to know the characters but you know in the beginning it's much more difficult because you you don't know each other well i certainly didn't um and you just don't know who is friend or foe whereas for me on housewives it was very very clear who was friend or foe <laughs> <laughs> for sure <laughs> that became obvious on you know minute 1 of day 1 i think listen about that that Real Housewives experience, and I'm honestly not being sarcastic when I ask you this, but I'm I'm just confused because unless I read it wrong, um, it's it's that you didn't click with this group of women. Um, most you know were not genuine. Um, they're just not people that you'd want to hang around. I was sort of expecting that if someone signed up, they would be thinking they were about to be going into fakeness, into cat fights, into yelling, into drama for the camera. Like, I'm not I'm not even sure what my question is here, but I guess. Were you expecting to find and build positive, engaging and genuine relationships on Housewives? Um, yes, because oh. um, I do that quite easily in my real life anyway. Um, and look, don't get me wrong, the the friendship between Cherry, Kyla and myself is absolutely re real. We are so, so close. You know, we still speak pretty much every day. We all hang out together. We never want anything to do with those other horrible women. but. What happened for me was different to the others in that um, I was egregiously lied to about what the season would entail. Um, of course, I never considered Neon Housewives, never. And um, when production came after me, they came after me really, really hard and wouldn't take no for an answer. And they were like, oh, no, we understand, Angela. We know your concerns, but it's not going to be like that anymore because, you know... Um, the world has evolved and, you know, the world is a kinder <laughs> place now. Oh, that was my favourite one. The world yeah. is a kinder place, right. Um, and because of COVID, yeah, sure. Um, and, you know, nobody wants that gratuitous bitchiness anymore. Yes, moments of drama, but we want to see strong, accomplished women, um, you know, being funny and being supportive and having a great time and making great television that way. 
And I believed it. And when I went in and um, figured out that actually that was a complete load of twaddle, um, I was pretty much out. I was very, very angry at having been lied to because that show is so expensive. You have to pay for everything. Um, it's, you know, it's it's grotesque. And these fake fights about nothing. And I'm sitting there going, don't think about the starving children in India. Don't think about the refugees in Syria. Having to engage in this ridiculous nonsense about nothing. It made me really cross. Um, mm. So when I quit, yes, I disrupted the entire season of production. Um, but hey, I got all the headlines, and everybody was really annoyed at that. It was, <laughs> and then and then I got Survivor. <laughs> Absolutely. So so no regrets about about not sticking out the rest of the season. Absolutely you... not. It was the the best look for me and my reputation was what I ended up doing, which was quitting. If I'd have stayed there, that would have been a terrible terrible look for mm. who I am. And to be honest, my mother has never been so proud of me uh, <laughs> from you know for walking away from that, which was very difficult, incredibly traumatic, um, and. You know, when they were begging me back, going, oh, well, tell Angelie that I quit 50 times. Well, tell her that I quit 100 times. Like, yes, that's because you have absolutely no integrity. When I quit, I quit once. <laughs> um, so, you know, I've been accused online of being weak and not being able to stick it out and whatever. It's like, I did the strongest thing ever. I'm super proud of myself. And although I hated every single second of that show, um, I haven't regretted any of it for one moment because it did get me good things. And, you know, it it did um, teach me a lot about other people and what I will put up with, because I'm quite I'm one of those people who puts up with a lot. You have to push me really hard for me to go <laughs> see you never. Mm. Well, talking about some of those headlines, um, Secret boyfriend blowing the lid on a relationship with Jamie Jury, um, dark parting messages for the cast of Real Housewives, um, unveil of six star apartment, revealing of diva antics, financial woes. Now, there's some headlines that were written about me in the Daily Mail. Have you ever, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever experienced any of this kind of stuff yourself? I had no idea that you too had a relationship with Jamie Jury. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a secret. It's all unveiled in the Daily Mail. Yeah, exactly. Um, sorry, what was the question? I was laughing too hard. Well, I was going to say, well, you've obviously, you know, experienced this kind of stuff yourself. I mean, how do you deal with it, especially if you know that something is completely wrong or at least a long way off the truth? Um, it is difficult because I've never been written about in, in that sort of way before. You know, I was a highly respected international journalist um and I accomplished a huge amount in my career that I was super proud of and you know when you get these horrible tabloid just nasty mean-spirited um stories written about you it's it's really really um it gets to you it really does and um you know the Daily Mail has been fairly horrendous to me but I suppose they're fairly horrendous <laughs> to everyone aren't they um it was difficult um, you know, oh, I still get accused of not having lived at Capital Grand. I lived there every single day. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and there was that stupid storyline about Janet saying that she, she'd broken into my apartment and there was nothing that it was completely empty. That was like, I, I wish it's it's an absolute nightmare, just full of my clothes and bloody sequins everywhere. Um, so yeah, I lived there every single day. Um, but I also have another life, like several other housewives who didn't live where they said they did. The difference is I did. Um, but I have <laughs> a real life. And, you know, to come home from the school run and see some disgusting peeping Tom Paparazzo outside my outside my real house waiting for me, where I now don't live. I've I've moved house because it made me feel so frightened in my own home. Wow. Um, just the sinister nature of whoever that person was. I never looked at my house that I loved 
in the same way again. Um, and, you know, you're used to being um, pounced on by perhaps when it's like, you know, a public event or you're dating a celebrity um, or that sort of thing. You don't expect to come home from the school run and find some gross man with a massive great lens sitting outside your house, snapping away to shame you. you I didn't ever um, expect that. So yeah, try and find me now, Daily Mail. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that out as a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did have, um, you know, you're talking about your massive career that you um had with with journalism and, and with anchoring so yeah. what what pulled you out of that career like is there any interest in going back um it was never that I walked away from it um I you know you don't you don't become an anchor at CNN from sitting there and wishing for it you get there by working your ass off mm. and it was it was an absolute dream and I I loved it I absolutely loved it and I was so proud of myself and um you know, being told as a kid, you'll never be on TV. It's like, oh, really? Watch this then. Um, it was moving to this country. And, you know, I, I do have a very British accent because I was at boarding school in England, but I am Australian. My mother is from Bendigo. Um, but I come over here and um, I'm, a, I'm a different Australian. So you've got to go in the different box um, because I am, you know, I, I have... Um, brown skin because my father was Indian and that and as well as my accent has worked against me really really badly they do not care in this industry over here how many Dalai Lamas I interviewed or how many 9-11s I broke they do not care you're just too different and I have been told that ugh, I'm getting emotional so many times to my face um, just again and again that I'm too ethnic too brown I've got an unpronounceable name, which is hilarious because if you can't pronounce four syllables in a row, I'm not the problem. Um, but it did mean that my anchoring career um, just fell away and it was heartbreaking. It was like suffering a devastating death. Um, and I was told that that was something that was likely to happen if I moved over here. But I thought, no, that's not true. That's not true. And it's absolutely 1000% true. And it's heartbreaking and just so wrong because you don't find that in, you know, the States or in the UK, switch on the TV. It's, you've got every single color, accent, creed, religion, everything. Um, but here, I've always said that diversity in television news in Australia means that you're a brunette. Mm. Switch on the telly and it's, you don't have to believe me, just switch on the telly. There's a proof right there. Um, but luckily for me, I did manage to use my career to make a whole different one, which I love. And I go all over the world emceeing events and yeah. interviewing the most amazing people, going to the most incredible places. Um, of course, when COVID happened, that just disappeared as well because there were no events and no travel. Um, so now I'm building it back up again. Um, but uh, that was a huge reason also why why I decided to do Housewives. It was like, you know, it's an opportunity for what? I don't know, but I'm just going to say yes because I never really say no to anything. I don't want to be sitting there having said no to something and going, what if I'd have just done it and wondering? Mm. I'm not that person. I will say yes to everything. Well, first of all, I don't know why people can't pronounce your name, Angela Rayo. It's very <laughs> easy. It's very easy. <laughs> very easy to oh pronounce. Oh, my God. It's usually Anjali Rayo. Oh, no, yeah. it doesn't rhyme with mayo. It rhymes with <laughs> wow. <laughs> Second of all, do, do you think things are changing a little bit now? I mean, there's a, a lot of um, like LGBTQI plus representation um, in, in, in shows. I mean, Walid Ali, uh, you know, d does does the, the project. Um, Tristan McManus, I mean, he, he's white, but he obviously has a very thick accent on, on Studio 10. Is, is 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 there a, is it starting to change a little bit? Not really. Yes, he has a thick accent, but he is also a white man. So he's got two big things going there for him. And you know what? Walid and I are good friends. I absolutely adore him. And whenever we meet up for lunch, he always just looks at me really quizzically and goes, I still don't understand why you're not on TV every single day. And it was like, 
because my darling, there was only one brown job and you got it. <laughs> <laughs> there was only, so I, I anchored the project a lot. Um, and there was, but there was only ever one time where Walid and I anchored, were main anchors together. Um, and that was because it was Christmas Eve and they couldn't find anyone else. So um, there's always a run through on the project before the live show. Yeah. And so in the run through, Wally and I were sitting there and production said, OK, um, and, you know, you, you take the welcome back. So I said, um, hey, everybody, welcome back. You're watching the project on SBS. And everybody just fell about. <laughs> you would never have two brown anchors on commercial TV in this country. It just would not happen. <laughs> well, let's make it happen. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. You know where to find me. The Daily Mail doesn't, but you do. <laughs> Otherwise, SBS has, has a new channel called World Watch. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I know. And you, can read, you can read the Arabic news or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible to even say that. Hey, li li listen, because we're just about out of time. Um, I, I, you know, with Survivor, I don't want to, you know, to give much away because because any question or answer might might give a clue um to something that happens in the show but can you at least tell me does Angeli get out of that that anchor chair and and persona and get down and dirty in the mud absolutely i mean a lot of anchoring is getting down and dirty in the mud anyway yeah. um, but um oh yeah i'm i would never be sitting on the sidelines polishing my tiara and you know checking my manicure um no 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 no, no. <laughs> i'm absolutely covered in filth it took me three weeks to get that mud out of my ears three weeks oh my yeah. oh yeah so no 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 trust me it and it happens very quickly <laughs> <laughs> um and just quickly have, have you got anything in the pipeline at the moment what, what's next for you after survivor um well yes is the answer um i have written my own reality show it's a concept that has never been done anywhere in the world. So I'm in the process of shopping that around and it's going pretty well so far. And I did just have a call from my delightful agent, Max Markson, this morning saying that he is pitching me for uh, another huge show. Uh, so if that happens, then uh, I'm sure we will be discussing it again, my friend. <laughs> oh, lovely. All right. Um, and just, just before you go, um, just had a couple of issues with your microphone. Um, can, can I just want to get the levels right. Can you um, just talk in your microphone, just for example, say Survivor a, a couple of times? Are you for real? Yeah. Okay. Real. Survivor. 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 Yep, that's good. Yeah. And just, just like, you know, say the word one as in like one, two, just if you say one a couple of times. This is very odd, but I'm going to do it for you. Okay. Well, one, two, one, two. Testing, testing. One, one, two, one, two. Ya yi sam se. That's one, two, three, four in Cantonese because I come from Hong Kong. Lovely. And just one more. Um, if you could just say like I, as in I, I, I. Oh, that's my favourite word. Apart from me. I, 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 I. Lovely. That's it. Now, that'll be a nice edit because I'm going to put that together as I won Survivor and that will be appearing yes. tomorrow in the Daily Mail as Anjali reveals on the TV Central podcast that she won Australian you Survivor. Are so How easy was that? Bad. So bad. Oh, you got me. You got me. <laughs> All right, Anjali. Thank you so much for your time. I'm looking forward to seeing you in action on, on Survivor and whatever's next or a huge big project or reading the news or doing something we, we want to see you back on the screens thank you thank you thank you me too me too it's my happy place been doing it for what 27 years I'm not about to stop yet and we don't want you to stop that was um angeli rao a villain contestant on australian survivor heroes vs villains monday 30 january at 7 30 p.m on 10 and 10 play that's it for this episode for the latest news ratings streaming info and podcasts also include recaps on Australian Survivor. I'm Aaron Ryan. Bye for now.